I don't usually get into issues that surround the news, the media, and the churches and religions. I don't get involved. I, I, I read the headlines, and that's it. And there's a great debate now, and the issue is abortion. And what we're not looking at is we're not looking at what the Bible says. We, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the word womb. That's where abortion centers, the womb. And we're going to see what God has to say. Now, I know on SoundCloud you won't be able to see what we have here, but at the end of the screen, we got 71 times womb or womb show up. Let me show you here. You got 71 times womb shows up and twice wombs plural. Uh, 51 chapters. Twice it shows up in Job 31 and Jeremiah 20. 56 verses in the Old Testament, 15 verses in the New Testament. Notice the New Testament. Matthew, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and Galatians. All the rest of the books. Job has the most by book, followed by Isaiah. So, look at the word womb, and we show it the first time in the Bible, wombs, plural, Genesis 20, verse 18. For the Lord has fast closed up all the wombs in the house of Abimelech. And we're not going to get into a great study, I'm going to leave that to you to read the Bible. Because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Now let's get to what the Bible says. Abimelech's household, the women, would not be able to conceive children because of the Lord. Did you get that? So who will bring about Having children and not having children of the womb. That's what we're talking about. The womb. The Lord. Jehovah. Okay. The first time womb singular shows up. Genesis 25, 23. This is Rebecca. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. The two manner of people shall be separated from the bowels inside. The one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. God said in the womb, here two babies are a people, are a light, are a nation. That solves it right there. You don't want to believe God. You don't want to trust what the Bible is. Then go get yourself in a sailing ship and go get another country founded upon atheism. Because this nation was brought to you by, I hate to say it, Christopher Columbus came over here sailing by the Catholic Church. You got to read the truth about that. And the pilgrims came over here with the Geneva Bible. And in Genesis 25, 24, she had twins in her womb like God said she would. Look at Genesis 29, 31. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Oh, I got accidentally pregnant. And I, no, no, there's no accidental pregnant. You two took your clothes off and involved yourself in the marriage bed, adultery, fornication, or whoredom. He used his penis for your vagina. Ooh. And how'd you get pregnant? God opened her womb. And we're not talking about Christians. There's no Christians here. 
God closed up the, the wombs of the house of Abimelech. God opened the womb of Leah. God said there were babies, there were nations in Rebekah. Look at Genesis 30, verse 2. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel and said, Am I in God's stead, who has withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? I can't get pregnant. I can't. Listen, my wife had that problem, Lisa. Now, to be, I was not the problem. Her body was the problem. And we're not going to get, but also God. And we prayed about it. And we sought medical doctors. And we were able to, by God and by medications, we had two children, which came from God. And if you don't have any children, and sorry, because I know a lot of Christian couples, they want a child and God. I know a family, they, they had, she got pregnant after pregnant, and, and they were stillborn, and it died. I still pray for that family. I don't know what happened to them. But notice this, you notice Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the founder, says the fruit of the womb. That's not the underwear. That's the fruit of the womb. Out of a woman's womb, which is controlled by God, whether to be pregnant or not be pregnant, that child is called a fruit. Well, you know, it's not alive, it's not life. Fruit is life. Genesis 30, verse 22, And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her, and opened her womb. Finally, now. God closed the womb of Rachel, and then later on, God opened the womb. And ma'am, if you got pregnant, God caused that pregnancy. God has entrusted you with your womb to hold forth fruit. And if you choose to get rid of that fruit, abort the fruit, kill the baby, you are a murderer. And the doctors are murderers. And thou shalt not kill. Genesis 38, 27 came to pass the time of travail. All right, so pregnancy comes with travail. There were twins in her womb. Genesis 49, 25, when they sent Rebecca out, he says, the blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. Have babies and be able to feed those babies with your breast milk. That's a blessing. How on earth America and the Supreme Court has turned a blessing of God and said, go ahead, get rid of it. We won't charge you. God says in Exodus 13, 2, Sanctify me all firstborn. Whatsoever opens the womb among the children of Israel, Jews, both man and a beast is mine. So for the nation of Israel, their firstborn children are dedicated. Now they don't sacrifice those children, but they're to raise that firstborn child and of the animals holy for God. Holy. I mean W-H-O and I mean H-O-L. Both. He says Numbers 8.16 I've given them to the children of Israel uh, the, the children of Levi among the children of Israel instead such as one that opens every womb. Then Numbers 12, 12, let her not be as a, one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when it cometh out of the mother's womb and, and as a stillborn. That's death in the womb. 
That's when there's no more light, when the baby died. So you, you can't be as dead when there is no light, my friend. He says, Deuteronomy 7, 13, He will love thee and talk to Israel, bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy, there's that womb again, the fruit of the land. That child inside that room is likened to apples, peaches, figs, corn, grapes, and wine. And for the nation of Israel, it is a blessing for the Jewish children. And it comes from God. Watch this one. Judges 13, 5. And I will conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head. This is uh, Samson. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. In the womb, Samson and all children are a child. This is the angel of the Lord talking to Samson's mother. The Lord himself. In verse 7 she explains that for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Well you can't have life without death. You can't have death without light. Samson in the womb, if he's not a living child, he cannot die. And he's a child. He is set forth as a child to be a Nazarite from the womb, living to his death, which is the suicide of death. And Judge 16, 17, he says, I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. Okay? Mother, not father. Fathers don't have wounds. And I can't believe we got to say that. Naomi says, Turn again, my doors. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb? Naomi says, Are there any children in my womb? According to Naomi, the great-great-grandmother of King David, she says that in the womb are sons, which she didn't have any. Her sons had died. In the womb are sons. Sons are children. Children are living. 1 Samuel 1 5. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And she's provoked by the other wife because, verse 6, the Lord had shut up her womb. Ma'am, if your womb brings forth a child, conceives a child, that's God. You don't believe in God? That's okay. That don't make God disappear. I, I love it. I'm a street preacher. And I've seen people walk by me. Oh, stick your fingers in your ear. You still can hear me. And I'm not going to shut up. You can choose foolishly. Oh, I'm going to... No. Okay? Job 1.21 Naked came, I, came out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return thither. Every baby is born with no clothing. Job 3.10 uh, he, He's questioning God, why was he not a stillborn? He didn't like what life is handing him. 
because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from my eyes. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Listen, you can't die in the womb. King James 1611 Bible, you cannot die in the womb if you're not living. In order to die in the womb, you've got to be living. And if you're living, that's a life. Job 10.18, remember Job has most about the womb. Wherefore thou hast brought me forth out of the womb. Here I am, life, I came out of my mother's womb. Why am I here? Job's a good book to study troubles and problems. And why am I here? 10.19 says, from the womb to the grave. You can't go to the grave if you have not had life. Life in the womb to the grave. We're not going to look at all these. Look at Job 31, 15. Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion as in the womb? Job says, creator God made him in the womb. He's not a product of evolution. You know, evolution teaches that, you know, the, the, the survival of the fittest. Now, that, that, that's a very innocent life. It, it can't carry a gun. It can't shoot me. So I, if I want to get rid of it, I'll just kill it. I'm. I'm in control. Job 31, 18, mother's womb, not father. Psalm 22, 19. But thou art he that took me out of my mother, out of the womb, and made me whole when I was upon my mother's breast. So not only does God put the fruit in the womb, it is God that gives the mother the power and the ability to carry that baby and to give birth to that baby and to provide milk for her baby. It's all on God, our Creator. I said, we're not going to do all this. Psalm 127.3. Lo, here we go. It is a memory verse. Put this on every Planned Parenthood doorway, even the doorway to the janitor's office, even the even the mop room door. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb, the fruit of the womb is his reward. That's not life? You mean God can't create life? Fruit is living. Children are a heritage of the Lord. Psalms 139 13, for thou hast possessed my reign. You've taken control of me. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Protection in a mother's womb is by God. It is the human that upsets that baby's life. It's the human that introduces alcohol, tobacco, or drugs that ruin that child's life. 
It is the human that walks into an office and says, here, get rid of this baby. It is the human to say, okay, do your medical procedures. I don't want that child. You see, God bless America. No, 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 no. No. You can't bless. God can't bless America until every murderer has been put to justice by what the Bible says, putting them to death. Because the blood cries out. So, uh, Proverbs 31, 2. What, my son? What? The son of my womb. That's the mother speaking to her son. The son is a child. The son is living. Look, the son of my vows. This mother made vows over her child. Oh, Lord, if, if, if you will do this, I will... Ecclesiastes 5.15 As he came forth his mother's womb, naked shall he return. Go, okay, that's what Job said. Look, okay, look at Ecclesiastes 11.5 As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Those bones grow. According to King Solomon, you can't have bones growing if it ain't living. Isaiah 13, 18, The bow also shall dash the young one's pieces. They shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Oh, that sounds like America. Their eyes shall not spare the children. Well, that sounds like America. But just, okay, we'll kill it. Whatever medical procedures they do. Isaiah 44, 2, Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb. Creator. Creation. Isaiah 44, 24, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. He has formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things. Creator. That's not what they're teaching the public school system. That's not what they're teaching in the college and universities. Of course women are going to kill their babies. They got no fear of God because they're not taught about God. Isaiah 46, 3. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, Israel, all men in the house of Israel which is born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. Let's pass Isaiah. Well, look at this one. Look at Hosea 12, 3. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. That's Jacob and Esau. No life in the womb? How did Jacob grab the heel of Esau? Without life. There are some eunuchs, Matthew 19, 12, which are born from their mother's womb. All right, there are some, there are some men that come out of their mother's womb and they're incapable of having children. And there are some that are born where they can have children. Like I said, I was able to have children. Lisa needed help. Life brings life. Friend, fruit of the womb. When was the last time you went to a dead apple tree? Seeking apples. Fresh and wonderful, ready to eat. Now, I'm not talking about an apple tree that has apples then died. I'm talking about an apple tree that has died. It's sitting dead. And then you go years later and try to find fruit. Luke 1.15 talks about John the Baptist. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. That, that's great for every pregnant woman. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Oh, it's too bad John the Baptist was not a life. 
It's too bad that a baby ain't living. How could he be filled with the Holy Ghost if he wasn't life? But you say there is no life because you don't believe in God, the Creator. You believe in Monkey Uncle Big Bang and we're here by chance. Possibly we're on a flat earth. <laughs> you want to go even further. Look about Jesus, Luke 1, 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, life, and shall call his name Jesus. You know, I'm not going to say this about Jesus. Well, I'll say what I did. There are people praying for the care for the cure of cancer. Okay? There was a man, I forget the names. I'm gonna, there was a man that came up with penicillin. I forget the name. Penicillin has been a great thing. There was a man that came up with the polio vaccine, and the polio vaccine has been great. There have been men and women that have come up with medical advances of study of medicine. That has helped us greatly today in 2022. And you pray for a cure for cancer. Well, my friend, what if the cure for cancer was aborted at an abortion clinic? God said, I'm going to give you the man that is, or the woman that's going to come up with the cure at a particular age. He's going to come up with the cure. He's going to solve. I will let you solve cancer. Any and all cancers. With whatever the drug is. And it won't be harsh on the body. It'll be, it'll be lenient and not as harsh as chemotherapy. But it is for all the cancers. Ah, oh, great. Yeah, Tommy or Susie. Where is this person? Oh, his mother aborted him. And what a woman thinks when she goes to abortion clinic is, what will my little child be? Where would she have gone? Who would she have married? What great accomplishments would she make? What good school would he go? What, tra what, what training in the field would he prosper in his life? What if the, the, my, the son or daughter, what wonderful gifts would they give me on Mother's Day, on the birthday and Christmases? I said before, there was a Christmas, and I found a bunch of stuff. I don't remember. I don't know what I gave my mom, but I found my dad an eight ball. I don't know why, and I put it was some cheap old paper. I didn't want anybody to see what I did, and I, I didn't want to get any Christmas paper and all that. I found whatever paper, and I wrapped it up, and I put it in the tree, and I put dad on it. And that was, you know, in the memory, you know, dad opened it, and I don't know what he said. I don't know if he chuckled. I don't know what he thought. And I, and I was, I was a young child. And then when I was a teenager, I was, we had moved to another house. And I was down in the basement. I was working on something. I'm going through all the tools, trying to find a particular tool or part or whatever it was. And I was the, and right there, and I, I can see it right now. And the house is, my dad's gone. The house is just messed up. It's infested. But I can still see on that bench, there's a window right there. And I moved this thing over. I don't remember what. And there was that eight ball. My dad kept that eight ball. Well, I would never have been able to give him that eight ball that he kept. That must have touched his heart because he kept it. That would never happen if I would have been aborted. I was a pill baby. My mom did not want to have any more children. She was on the birth control pill. 
and God had me to be. God put me in the fruit of her womb, and here I am, a pill baby. I was born three months too early. I spent four months in an incubator in the hospital. They didn't expect me to live. God wanted me here, and if you don't like my preaching, you go to God and say, God, well, why did you keep him in that womb? That's we're studying now. You see, what they're not going to tell you, I guarantee is, the what ifs of that child you had an abortion. I mean, even if you put that child up for adoption, maybe if, if your heart changed, maybe, you know what, I'm going to try to find that child. At least maybe I can put my arms around Maybe they'll understand. Maybe they won't. And we come up to Mary to conceive in her womb, bring forth. What if Mary, the Virgin Mary, and she didn't remain a virgin in her life. She had other children. But what if Mary aborted Jesus? All the world would die and go to hell. How's that? I don't believe in Jesus. Oh, that's your problem. I do. Luke 141. And it came to pass when Elizabeth, this is John the Baptist's mother, heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped, that's John the Baptist, leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. How did the baby leap? If it's not living, how did that baby kick? If it's not living, I, I forget with with Rachel or Henry for at least one of those one of my two children, man, they kicked all the time. She said, I think it was Henry. Well, how did he kick if he's not living? When we, I know it was Henry. When we went for that ultrasound, and we, for both our children, we we found what the sexes are, so we could name them. When, we, when they did the ultrasound for Henry, we found the heartbeat and everything. He got a heartbeat. He's living. When it came to for the sexual organs, there's male or only female. That's it. My son churned in the womb. But within that churning, he didn't churn quick enough. We were able to know that he was a boy. I don't know, purposely or not, but I mean, you can't move, you can't, they say they found babies sucking their thumbs, kicking. John the Baptist, when he comes up to the womb of Mary, who has the Lord Jesus Christ in her womb. Now look at this, in the New in the kind of New Testament, the Gospels, because the New Testament is not to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Luke 1 and she spake out a loud voice and said, Blessed are thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Luke 1 she said, The babe leaped, the babe, not the thing, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. You can't leap, you can't have joy if you're not living. Luke 2, 21, the eight days were accomplished. The circumcised the child, as his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Luke 2, 23, as is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy in the Lord. We've read that in the law. Look, male, female, man, the first child, the first male, that's particularly God's child. There's a sexual orientation, if that's the right word, in the womb. You're either a male or female. And I forget at what period of time that happens. I don't know. And they say the father determines his sperm, genes, genetics. Here's Acts 3 2. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. We read about where, where there, there are 
children, men or men or boys, men or girls, are born and they're unable to have children from the womb. Here's a baby that was born and he was born crippled. Still alive. Again, Acts 14, 8, being crippled from his mother's womb. That, that, that happens. That's sin. That's not God. Romans 4, 19, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Sarah was 100 years old, and the miracle of God was she had a baby named Isaac. A 90-year-old man and a hundred, I mean, wait a minute. Yeah, she was 100 years old. Isaac, uh, Abraham was 110, I think. Who had Sarah pregnant with child in the womb at 100 years old? God. What did Abraham and Sarah do when they heard the news of God? They laughed. That's what Isaac means. Galatians 1.15, be pleased, God, who separates from my mother's womb. God called a life that wasn't a life, according to the abortionists, according to the world. I've got one place here if I can find it real quick. Jeremiah 1 5, before I was formed, before I formed thee in the womb. That's God speaking, verse 4. I knew thee. You know, every baby that goes into an abortion clinic and does not come out, but the mother does, God knows that baby. Those babies go to heaven. They're not charged with sin. Oh, the doctor will be. Oh, the mother will be. And the father or the boyfriend or the, 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 the you know, the, the shacker upper, the abortion, the, the adulterer, fornicating whoremonger, if they don't repent of their sins and get right and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the whole thing with abortion issue comes down to this. Whether you believe God or you don't believe God. Now, if you don't believe God, Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, 4, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Oh, I know what thing. You, you find out you, the thing turns blue, you get the cross, whatever the, the test you have. And, and you find out that you got an unwanted pregnancy. I know what you do. You call, oh God, that you don't believe in. Then you call on a God that you don't believe in. Oh, forgive me for the thing I'm going to, I'm going to do. Keep me and the doctor safe while we pursue this procedure. Where you pray to a knick-knack, paddywhack God that's gold, silver, plastic, wood. And it's no God at all. Abortion issue is you are the God. You are in charge of life. Well, it's, it's not life. That's an alibi. That's an excuse that God's not going to take. If there is a God, can we look up another verse here?
Paul writing to the church in Rome. You ready? Romans 13, 19. Put this on the floor mats of the entrances to the abortion clinics. For, the, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Many cases of abortion is you've been sleeping with the wrong person. Thou shalt not kill. What are you going to do with that? Oh, you're going to erase it. You're going to say there's no God. Amos says, prepare to meet thy God. The psalm says in two places, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. One last verse. Acts 16. I know you can't see this on SoundCloud. Acts 16.31. He brought and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. You can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Mark 16. Going all the world and preach the gospel of each creature. I, I know there are Christians out there, they're protesting, pro-life, pro-life, and everything. That's not what Jesus told you to do. He said, go preach the gospel. The gospel is, oh, abortion kills, abortion. Yeah, it kills. Abortion is murder. Abortion kills. But it's not what you're told to preach. You are told to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Yeah, you might be able to save the life of that infant in the womb. If you can get that mother to turn around and walk away. But it does, does no good for that mother and that child and the doctors and the nurses to die without the knowledge of the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. And save that child to grow up and go to hell. You get out there and preach Jesus. They believe on Jesus. The Holy Spirit will work on their hearts for the right. But then again, in this church age, the way things are going, it's completely opposite. We're rich, we're great, we're wonderful. Guys, you're miserable, naked, poor. And you make me sick. Right now, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if you've never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the salvation. He is the one that can get you out of hell and into heaven. The Holy Spirit can work in the heart to do right. Preach the gospel, Christians. Nowhere does it say, go out and preach murder. No, it don't say that. You got to get them at Calvary. Right now, without Calvary, without salvation, they don't care about God. They don't care about the word of God. They don't care it's murder. They have no Holy, godly conscience. And if you can stop that baby from getting murdered, that's okay. That's good. But if that baby grows up and that mother goes on and those doctors and nurses go on and they die without the gospel of Jesus Christ, what good did you do? That baby's murder, he goes to heaven. Now, I'm not suggesting murder. I'm trying to look at reality. You're not going to get to the judgment seat of Christ and expect to, oh, we preached against abortion, pro-life, and, and, and murder, and we, we, we held the, 
the picture of baby fetuses and all that. And God said, that's not what you were supposed to do. I told you what to do. I told you to preach the gospel. 